is 7.05 on Georgia meeting of the town of Whiteley Select Board. Uh, purpose of today's meeting is a fiscal year 2024 tax classification hearing. Uh, Brian, you want to go into the general? Yeah, I'll read this. What, what generally do we have to ask the accomplishments? Yeah, let me read the, the scale here and then you can open the hearing if you want. Or do you want to wait for a little bit? Um, to accept public comment on whether residential, commercial, industrial, open space, and personal property should be taxed with one rate for all property classes or to use different tax rates for different property classes. Uh, I think before we open the hearing, you can go into the uh, the four items that, they, that we have to decide. Yep. So every fiscal year, the select board has to make four tax policy decisions. Um, and this is the required public hearing for the board to uh, solicit public input, uh, get information from the board of assessors, from the public, and then to uh, make that decision before tax bills go out uh, before the end of December. So the four tax policy questions are um, whether the town should adopt a single or split tax rate. So what that means is um, there's five classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal. Um, so the you can, the, the state classifies residential and open space together and commercial, industrial, and personal together. And the select board has the opportunity to have different tax rates for the RO as opposed to the CIP. Um, and if the select board wanted to um, have a different tax rate for those two different classes of property, um, it would decide how much of a, a split tax rate. Um, and the, the board to. doesn't have a, any discretion in breaking those out. Correct. They're state mandated uh, residential open space and commercial industrial personal are mandated. They stay together. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's the first question. The second question is whether the whether the the town should adopt an open space discount for all class two open space properties. Um, so what this is reducing the um, is reducing essentially the, the tax payments or the tax burden on open space properties within the residential and open space classification. Mm -hmm. So if the town were to adopt their, if the town were to adopt an open space discount, we would need to decide at, at what percent the discount will be and the effect of, of um, proving that open space discount is that it increases the uh, it increases the tax burden on residential properties within the town. Because it's changed, it's shifting the tax burden within that RO class. So that RO class is still paying the same amount of the, the same uh, tax levy. It's just distributed with a with a, a higher so percentage of the if, if I remember from space. past years, the classification, the designation of the open space we have in town uh, would not qualify under this. It, uh, we do have some classes, we, but I believe the majority of it's um, in chapter land. Okay. Some part of another. And I think the assessors can always be okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the third question is um, whether the town would adopt a um, a discount for uh, class one residential properties that are the principal residence of a taxpayer. Um, so that owner occupied properties is what we're talking about here, um, as opposed to um, non owner occupied properties, which are typically vacation homes or rentals. So uh, some municipalities, uh, a handful in the Berkshires, we have a lot of second homes and uh, municipalities on the Cape will adopt this um, and it shifts the tax burden. Um, it shifts more of the residential tax burden onto rentals and um, vacation homes. And then the fourth question, uh, the fourth uh, tax policy is whether the town should adopt a, a uh, small commercial exemption. So that's talking about um, it would affect commercial properties that have less than 10 employees um, and an assessment of less than a million dollars. Um, and um, so what, how that works is that if a, a property, if a commercial property qualified, it would get, it would get a discount, it would pay less taxes and um, the burden would shift within that CIP class from the from the small commercial businesses to the other larger commercial and industrial 
um, and personal property taxpayers within that class. Um, so that's a quick overview of, of the four questions. Yeah. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will move that we open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So now we will have a public hearing which can address any one or all of the four items. I think first we have a report from Board of Assessors on this. Yes. Uh, sure. Before we, we get into that, um, um, as Cindy to talk about each of the items, but uh, <laughs> there's some tables that I developed uh, explaining the uh, tax situation, assessment of properties in town. You have some here. To do. I do have some, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are here from. Fred, if you want to let me know which ones you're talking yeah, about, I can bring them up too. Yeah. Well, for people that are here, the only thing, Brian, your last meeting where you talked about the utility rates, uh, electric rates online, I, I couldn't read them on the screen. The numbers were blurry. So okay. if you're pulling this up again, I don't know. If you're at home, you can be able to read them. But at least the people here would see that. So when you start going, call, call up. The okay. first, the first document you want to mention, yeah. then okay, Brian will pull it up and you'll see if it's legible. Okay, there's uh, the property assessment taxes with single and tax rate, single and split rate. Yeah. Is that this one? Yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that will come up. One second. This one? Yep. Yeah. 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 Anyway, this was kind of a carryover from last time. We looked at this. We wanted to, we had a committee together and we looked at some individual properties to see what the tax rates would be with a single and split rate. Uh, randomly collect, randomly pick some of these uh, parcels, property owners, and updated it to fiscal 24 and tax assessment. This information is online. Anybody can look at it. You can see these, these dollar amounts rounded to the nearest number. Uh, that's the first column uh, for commercial, industrial, and residential. And then uh, with a single tax rate of what I come up with was $16.88 uh, based on our levy limit and the tax rate. Uh, uh, I just call it analysis that uh, Division of Labor has on their website. And you have to pick how much percent you want to shift from residential to commercial. And I think last year we we, we highlighted the 1.2% shift, a 20% shift. That's what this reflects again, 20% shift. Uh, the difference is between a 16 ABA and the uh, with a single rate, a split rate would be 20 26 for uh, commercial. That's about $4 almost difference. It's similar to what we looked at last year. The rate was about the same uh, uh, difference. And then you can see the difference in uh, uh, difference in single versus split rate. Also, number of parcels we're talking about. Uh, sets value just from the uh, Valley four sheet that the Department of Revenue puts out. Anybody can see what that is. And then from that sheet, I calculated the single family residential, which is the majority of our 
taxpayer is the 563 total residential, which includes the 563 with open space with other apartments, multi-family. That comes to 932 uh, parcels. And then the average commercial, I calculated by tables. I think Brian sent you tables for commercial, industrial, and personal property. That's where that numbers come from. I took the values and applied the different rates, single and split rate. And you can see the differences here. Uh, and the impact on the, the residential would be basically 65, $65 every time you pay your taxes, you're going to save $65. That's what that is. $65 savings if we go split rate for residents. Last year, that would have been only like $50 for split rate would have been a difference. And then the bottom line there is for commercial industrial <laughs> properties uh, with a higher tax rate, the value there was almost $1,000 more every quarter, every time they had a tax bill, you're paying $1,000 more. Um, I don't show that rate for last year because last year it wasn't calculated properly. It didn't include the personal property tax in there. This one does. That's how I come up with the 38.44, 75 cents. So, so that's basically the difference. Go with a split rate. Residents will save $65 a quarter, and businesses will pay $1,000 more a quarter. Okay. If you look at the other table I prepared, look at assessed values by class. In tax rate, we've chosen neighboring communities. There's three sections there neighboring communities, split tax rate communities, and a Route 5 corridor. Um, even though the, the table says fiscal year 21, most of these have been updated. The current, uh, they offer they vary a little, very slightly, but uh, it's, it's still. Well, the same percentage for for each of the, for the residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. The percentages come up the same. Uh, as you can see, for neighboring communities, which is mostly uh, Franklin County and some in Berkshire County, you can see the ones that uh, are closest to us. And, uh, only one really has, has a split tax rate, and that's Montague. And you can see the tax rates over the last three years. Some have a, a this year's fiscal 24 tax rate. And this is as of today. Look at the Department of Labor site, Department of Revenue site. You can look at that and see the rates. That's what they are on there today. Anybody can see that rate. Uh, <clears throat> the middle shows the split tax rate communities. The rest of them in Franklin County didn't have that. And the reason for that is. If you look at the percent of uh, commercial properties compared to residential, it's quite a bit higher than residential properties. It's almost like four to one. Our ratio is the opposite, one to four. Right, so we don't belong in the category for split rate communities because they focus more on commercial properties because they need additional revenue and then make up the difference. And you can see the split rates that I've shown there, uh, and some vary from three or four up to five, ten, ten, nine, uh, not ten percent, <laughs> ten, ten tax rate numbers, different double tax rates from five to ten or ten to twenty. There's a significant difference. Uh, and the one community you, you may read about more so here is, is Hadley. Last year, uh, on 22, they had a split tax rate because they were losing commercial businesses in their mall. So they wanted to make sure the commercial paid enough property tax compared to residential. So they charged them a higher rate to make up the difference. The, last, the, next, <clears throat> the next year, and even this year, went back to a single rate because the commercial properties went in, increased in value. Yeah. Okay. And finally, if you look at the Route 5 
corridor and from Northampton to Greenfield. Because for a lot of our commercial development is, you all know where that is. Uh, you know what's vacant land? <clears throat> Pardon me. You know what's vacant land on here? You know where properties are being improved? <clears throat> where new development is going on? And that's where our competition is for businesses usually. Pretty sure we have an industrial park here, but if there isn't much new going on. There's more opportunities on the Route 5 corridor. And you can see the tax rates there are all for uh, the single rate. And even Northampton, Northampton and Hatfield are continuing with a single rate for this, this coming fiscal year. And you can see the percent, again, the percent of uh, commercial CIP percent compared to the residential is, is similar to what we asked. It's the, the four to one ratio. So, okay. And the final table is uh, growth in assessed value. Our commercial, other commercial versus values. There, are we growing in assessed values? Are we getting new businesses, new residents coming in? Well, you can see where new, who residents are being built. Uh, you know where new commercial is going on and, and uh, on State Road, also on River Road. Uh, mainly you can see the, the percentages have increased. I actually calculated this with within a six year growth, the residential and, and you can see the commercial. <clears throat> Just last year, 2024 is a look at that compared for one year from 23 to 24. The growth is 8%, 8.4 for residential, uh, 6.8 for commercial. The total tax, the total cents value is going up 8% this year. This comes right off the state's LA4 table that they developed based on information that we provided. So, so you know, our values are, are staying pretty consistent. They, uh, even if look at the uh, residential, the last two columns, there isn't much variation from year to year in the residential or the CIP rate. We're staying with a percentage of every year. Every year. So, uh, can, we, I, can I ask a quick question, Fred? Yeah. Do we know why the growth rate in 2024 is about double the average growth rate for the prior six years? And looking at 8.4% growth in the residential industrial, uh, residential um, RO yeah. column, where the six year average was 4%, but then this coming year, this, I guess, year that we're in is 8.4%. I'm wondering if we understand why that this year's rate is expected to be double. Well, as you probably know, properties are selling a lot higher. And the last two years, probably, than they have in the past, the property uh, market value is a lot higher. Uh, it's a lot higher than we're mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's so, if it's the last couple of years, that should have shown up in the previous years as well. well that doesn't yeah, seem to have. It didn't as much in the other years, so I don't know. But that's what we got. Okay, to so we don't really know why. No, that came from the GOR table. That's what they figured was our percent growth. I know, Cynthia, do you know why? Well, I'm actually confused by that because I believe I thought last year our our our, our residential uh, our our growth was about 15, 15 and 15 percent. That's what I recall. I don't have mm -hmm. last year's stuff with me. Well, just look at you because their total values are there, and and those do. I mean, they they seem to go up and down a bit, but just like twenty three compared to twenty two, there's almost no growth like a percent or so in that ro number uh previous year it went up by thirty thousand. It, 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 like i think that, that previous year was a reassessment year 20, that 23 the, would have, yeah 23 would have been a like i thought that was, was for fiscal year 22 because that would account for the big jump 22, yeah, right, from 232 right. to 261 right. which to me sort of makes that average a little bit skewed because 
That most is, has definitely skewed. Is mo I'm that jump is mostly in one year. Right, but it, it comes off the table, but it depends on what range of years you pick. I recall it as being more like there are just fourteen percent. They do from one year to the next. The LA four comparison, you should have had that. Brian yeah. that with the time flex. But it, it's every five years is a reassessment. Yes. Right. So and I think twenty one to twenty two <laughs> is that reassessment. All right. Yeah, I think maybe. That, that, I, I remember there was a big jump in that year, and I think that that would account for it. Yeah. Okay. But that does not account for a big jump yeah, from twenty three to twenty four. I don't know. We haven't asked that. I guess the uh, UNR why that big increase or or what changed that year to do that that much other than sales have been higher and we get more sales recently. Uh, mm -hmm. commercial develop, commercial development. And is, is that some, but, is that number a total of the assessments yes. in the town? Yes. So that's numbers that you, you give that we give to them. Right? You give to them. Okay. So those assessed numbers are the numbers that the residential properties will be paying their taxes off of. Yes. Okay, so even if the tax rate stays even, the residential taxpayers will be paying 8.4% based on this right. more. Right. They will have an increase. Right. The commercial. Complicated by what? That's just the basis. Right, right. right. Based on the numbers we have here, yes. but I'm just trying to establish, right. get guidelines here. Yeah. So then the commercial would pay the 6.8% more. Yeah, right. And then, shown here, yeah. and then in the end, the fraction is probably the more relevant thing. The fraction paid by residential goes up a tiny bit. Yeah. The fraction paid by commercial goes down a tiny bit. The overall trend from the last six years is a very slight decrease. Yeah. For residential, a very slight yeah. It's decrease. relatively stable. It's, but it's, yeah, it's pretty stable. It's a very small. Right. Uh, change so I, I guess to me it shows that you know we're getting comparable growth in, in commercial versus residential properties in town they're keeping up with each other the trends and even you know if, if you look at the other one for, for the neighborhood for the blue five borders you know the percentages are the same they're not saying they're not changing that much yeah, but, but, year to year but well, what this says to me is it's, I've heard concerns expressed from people over the last several years that it's harder for people to stay in town because right. properties more. And this will make it yet more difficult by making their, the taxes higher. Well, yeah, it, 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 the, tax, the tax amount because you have to apply the tax rate to this. Right. But yeah. I'm just saying that for people on fixed income, yeah. whether like this, just makes it more expensive to stay in town. Right. Am I wrong? Well, just, um, just quickly, well, to what Fred was what Fred was mentioning was that because there's such a large increase in total assessed value, there's going to be a corresponding drop in the actual tax rate. Well, there might be. We won't know that until well, after we have our budget. But then it's well, it, yeah, it, it's calculating around right. Almost sixty cents less. Yeah, you can see we've been pretty consistent. Well, no. most towns are within one or two percent. Uh, you know, the group five, the group five border where we're at, but one or two percent number of surveys. No, I'm saying they, they, even if, if the tax rate stays the same, yeah. you're going to have a residential tax increase because the assessment, the average assessment, has one. Right. Right. All right. I, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're, I guess, surprised if anybody else is going to be of, of the values that, that houses are selling for in town. I mean, there's there's nothing nothing very inexpensive anymore, even a, yeah. or even a lower, the marginal lower for ones are selling for quite a bit. Well, it's, maybe there's not we, we, Which is supply. good when people go to sell their houses and yeah. not as good when their taxes are based on it. Yeah, yeah. and most people maybe are, are I guess not. Maybe I would say I would guess most are, are not current residents. They're coming from other communities. Too lately, paying these higher prices. 
for for houses here because maybe there isn't as many available anywhere else in the state, and this is more reasonable than going to Westfield or Southampton or uh, I, I don't know why, but and maybe our tax rate has something to do with that as well. And we look at that too. I don't know. I don't know if the tax rate has anything to do. I think the overall tax bill tax has bill. a lot to do. With it. It may have something to do with it, but what the rate is right. is. Yeah. I don't think it makes a particular. Yeah. That's why I think the fraction is really the yeah the <clears throat> important thing that it's steady or fraction going down perhaps ever so slightly for residential. That's actually I think that's the most important takeaway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all, all of those are in a range from seventy nine and a half to right. low eighty ish. Right. To me, is essentially stable. Right. That's right. Because once noise. you noise. Because you know, if the, if we got a one-year value here. Yeah, that residential percent is bigger than the commercial percent. But if you average the previous six years, the commercial was up by like five percent versus four percent. So that, you know, looking year to year, it's like looking at climate data, right? When you look at the temperature right. versus time, right. there's such a big variation. You have to look at a hundred years worth of data to understand. Mm -hmm. Why we're in the trouble we're in there. Yeah. So, and, and I feel a little bit similarly about this. We're looking at data with a lot of fluctuation over a rather short time. It's going to be hard to pull anything out of it other than averages. Well, I also think that in in a town as small as this, any one you know a new, a new two houses can can make it make it make a difference. And yeah. to me that's so looking that's more that's history. more statistical noise than a trend. Right. When, and that may so that so these may well be noise as well. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it's quite possible. Uh, mm -hmm. you know and, and four and eight percent figures are still bigger than the, the point one point two percent changes that we're getting in that Right. Year comparison, I guess you would get different numbers. I just picked six years. I think in my mind that was reasonable for starting with 18. I think it's when Pine Plains Estates started. Right. Well, I'll be somewhere in that range. So these numbers are available on the website. I think it goes back 10 years. We just go from 2013. Yeah. And what, what year comparison do you want to make? I mean, yeah. they're going to change from one year. Right. Year, two, three, yeah. four years, like you're saying. So. Understood. That, that, I think it's my yeah. point, too. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, I would make the same comment about small sample sizes on the property assessment page when you look at the average commercial and average industrial uh, taxes, that especially the industrial, going about 15 parcels total, a yeah. big change in one can skew that number. Very quickly, yeah, right. and the, in, even the commercial forty-nine properties is not yeah. a big. Uh, and, and, it, and, all this, and even looking at that, the average—I think the average is depends. Well, which ones do you want to exclude? You want to exclude well, no, no, I don't want to exclude any. Ones, but when, yeah, when but you take then you're starting the picture. When, when you take an average, I will go back to the old joke about Bill Gates walking to a bar, yeah. raising the average income in the bar by millions of dollars. Yeah. You get a small sample and one large event. One outlier, yeah. One outlier yeah. is use an average. Right. Yeah. Now it is our best to describe your Gaussian distributions. Yeah. Right? And, and I guess what I, I guess about my mind is is or right. interest in me is what what tax incentives do residents have in town? And I think there was something that went on our website here last week. Uh, Jackson Sands for residents. And it, it, right now, I think it's on the uh, assessor's page on here that lists uh, four or five different programs that residents can use to get tax breaks. And, and these are being, are being used. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a handout of uh, what some of these what some of these are. I don't know if I share that with you or not. You know, I think they came out by, by meeting last year. Well, what? 
What is intended to uh, what tax incentive do residents have? And this is this is what we we know of is happening in lately, and, and a lot of communities offer these kind of tax incentives. The Massachusetts Senior Circuit Breaker tax credit. Every resident in, in, in the state that pays income tax and I guess property tax has an opportunity to get a refund on their income tax for that. That is happening. I don't know, maybe some of you apply for that. It comes up when I do taxes because maybe my income level is less or, or, or whatever, but uh, I see. there's uh, in the ranges from 750 to 1500 that's today. There's there's legislation talking about doubling that amount. And the reason the number's not given it's XX is because we don't have that data no. because that's on individuals' tax returns right. and we don't really have access right. to that. But it's some it's gonna be some number. Um and we it'd be hard to know where it is between zero and whatever, but it's probably not zero. It's probably <laughs> And I appreciate you putting this together, and yeah. we should publicize this as much as possible. But it's not necessarily relevant to this. Well, to this it, hearing. we're looking at a split rate to save residents, uh, residential rate. I mean, it is ways for mm -hmm. residents to reduce their taxes. Whether but if we, it, if, if we had a split rate, they could save that and this. Yeah. Well, they could save yeah. both. Yeah. But but under the, the circuit breaker. Yeah, we're looking at statewide averages and the percent of population that would qualify. You know, there's like there's like 15 percent of, of Wavy seniors are eligible, which is like 250 seniors. I and, I think it's great that there's a program to do that. I would love for our seniors not to have to qualify for that. Right. That the taxes wouldn't be high enough that they would even qualify for that. So that's something we're never going to know what the dollar amount is. Right, but but, these, these but again, this, these aren't relevant because these would be applicable to people whether it's a single tax rate or a split tax rate. The same, right. these right. these would still apply. Right. So it's not relevant as to whether we have a single or split right. tax rate. But but these other others listed here are all specific for later residents. And it's it's re it's residents. It's not commercial properties. Right. It's, a, it's a big difference. Commercial properties don't. But the people are, regardless of what we adopt, the same people would still be eligible for them. It does. This is not going to affect whether people are eligible for these. So if it's a, if it's a business, well, a business is going to be eligible. The businesses are not eligible for any. Uh, to my knowledge, any of these, and to not, further carry that. No, nor nor would nor would they be under either. Happy. What what I'm saying is that it's great that these are available. It's great that we publicize them, but it is does not impact this decision because they are eligible whichever way we go. These these programs are in place whichever direction we go on on this is not going to impact whether people in the town are eligible for these programs. No. No. But it makes them aware of that they are. Yes, but I'm just saying I'd like to hear from other people because this is not relevant to the decision we have to make today. Well, in a way it is because we don't do this for businesses. And I have no idea what tax breaks businesses have. Maybe there is an organization that keeps track of that. But... If tax, if business and tax breaks, they are not relevant to this either. Well, because they would, they would be applying whether we had a single or a split rate. Doesn't it depend on how you frame the argument, though? I mean, if, if you're raising... I'm sorry, can you identify yourself? Yeah, first? I'm Jenny Morrison, um, and I'm the newest assessor in town, so I'm still learning all that stuff. But your comment that, you know, people on fixed incomes are getting priced out, so if you're framing it as... A split rate would save residential people would reduce their expenses. Correct. Then that's a different framing than we can shift the burden of generating the pool to more commercial and industrial. If 
if the residential pool goes down, the commercial industrial personal property pool goes up. Yes, that there would be an increase in the CIP pool, and that's reflected in the uh, chart here that commercial industrial personal property taxes, though the town does not collect the personal property taxes for the for large corporations, they go to the state. Brian, am I correct in that? Yeah, it depends on their on their it depends on their depends but on their most of the large corporations' personal property taxes go to the state, not to the town. They're largely being taxed on the real estate, not the personal property. It's they have um, it's, con it's, it, it's, con <laughs> it's convoluted, but I don't quite get that distinction yet. But like I said, I'm learning this stuff. But well, my then, point is yeah. that your, your, your point is accurate that people are eligible for right. whatever they're eligible for under both right. a split and a single right. rate. That's an accurate statement. But the fact that there are programs to service lower income people. Yeah doesn't necessarily not lose its relevance. No, I think the programs are great, and I think that we should publicize them to the- I think we should, the we should move account. on because it's right. like we're beating a dead horse. And, and that's what I was I was trying to do, is that I just don't think it's relevant to this, to our either or debate, these programs that are available either way. They, they don't inform this debate. Okay, uh, what I'm basically done with my presentation. Uh, I just sent it to you. Do you, you want to see? Well, I could read what we. Each, wait, 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 each one of you, what, what our proposal is, or do we want to hear from the audience here? What I think you give what you're. This, this is the hearing, and you're a presenter. So I want to give. Okay, well, okay. we had a meeting last Tuesday. It was the last Tuesday, the 21st of November, whatever that was. And the board, and I am not on the board, the board, which was Fred and Kathleen only, uh, Jenny came in late as a new member. She, she chose to abstain from the board. Uh, starting with the open space, this, and, and this is our recommendation. It's, that's all it is. The open space, it, it, it does not apply to Waverly because we use the 200s open space only for chapter. Um, and that was was put in place specifically, so should there ever be a split tax rate, farmers would not be considered commercial. Um, <clears throat> the residential exemption, um, I think the feeling has been all along that the people who would be most hurt by a higher tax rate tend to live in older stock housing, which is considerably lower assessment. Uh, and as we have been saying, they do have available these programs. I don't think all the people who could be, who could get it are getting it. Um, but that's that's certainly, what we have to, we have to publicize. I, I understand your argument that it doesn't matter. It applies in any case. But Waitley has adopted the clause 41C and a half. So we not only have raised the income and asset level considerably compared to the town where I live, it's you know, or twice as high here that you can qualify. Plus, we add the COLA each year to the amount of the uh, of the abatement of the exemption amount, so that it's it started at five hundred and it's now almost at six. It will be at six this year for sure. Of the dollars, so that's that's pretty good. So the feeling is that the people who who most benefit are people whose houses. I would say pretty much are are going to come in at a fairly lower assessment. So you're it's a fairer system in the people who can afford it can still afford it. So we recommended or we voted or they voted not 
to recommend the residential exemption. For small uh, commercial, we get a, a list each year from the state of who would qualify. There were, the listing had 34, but there were two duplicates. So there were 32 businesses, and in all cases except two, the the property was not assessed as commercial. The land was in at the residential rate, which is about 50% less than the commercial rate, and considerably less on excess land after the first acre. Um, I think the commercial for excess land is uh, about 25,000 per acre, whereas it's 3,000 for residential. So the board voted not to recommend the adoption of that exemption. And then, um, based on the work that Fred did both this year and last year working on a committee that was then in existence, um, the vote again was seeing that there was no new evidence to suggest that a change would help the community, that it, it could act as a disincentive to commercial. And since there were no small commercial ones that would really qualify for the exemption, uh, the goal was to recommend a single tax vote. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Richard, that's Amherst Trucking. So in a split rate, what kind of tax shift? Are we talking about 20%? Yeah. So, so, so that, that, you can talk about anything from five to 50%. Okay. So, so the, the, those are the legal five to limits. fifty, you said? Five to fifty are the legal okay, so limits. Even, that, at, even at 20%. Right. In 2024, you're asking. 64 property owners to absorb 20% versus 932 property owners. Am I reading that correctly? Yes. So 64 commercial property owners. Commercial and industrial. And industrial. We're not all Yankee Candle. Okay. But mostly we, we, we've all been hit plenty hard enough <laughs> and our property values have not climbed the way residential property values have because there frankly there's a lot of people that are getting out of business because of the expense and the labor shortage so i think that i mean waitley is doing pretty well for waitley as we have been, that's why everybody here is still here. So I just, uh, you know. But I, you're absolutely right that it would be 64 properties absorbing. Right. But seems the, crazy. Well, and happily, but, it's a whole different animal, and that didn't work. And, and, and every, every, every town is different. Correct. Every town has a different mix of residential, commercial, industrial. Right. Um, Waitley doesn't have that much. Well, well, well we've, we've got. There's a lot of neighbors. Like, who are the neighbors. Excuse me, Judge, just for a second. When you talk about 64 versus 932, the burden isn't split equally among those 64. No, and again, it's, the it, property, our, our tax rate per acre, as she just said, you know, residential 3,000, where our commercial property is at 25 per acre. So there, there's already discrepancies from the get go. Well, that, that's the assessment. Not Correct. That, right. But if you look at the uh, values by Patrick, for Waitley, to, for now, let's take personal property out because the taxes don't go, don't largely go to the town. So looking at commercial industrial, the numbers, the, sorry, that's long the uh, levels of commercial industrial are within about, five to 10% of each other. And the industrial here is largely free properties. Correct. It's Yankee Candle, it's Covestro, it's Berkshire Gas. Right. So, and they, those three properties absorb, would be absorbing a disproportionate share of this increase. 
that it is not that burden. I, I appreciate this issues of small business. I'm a small business owner myself, so I know all about it. But this is not equally shared across 64 properties. If, when you look at this sheet, you see that uh, yeah, nice, a little unfortunately, it is. The, the, the 932 number doesn't, you know, you, we can say that that number is not. No, but when you, when you spread it for 932 properties, the variations of one or two higher low price properties wash it doesn't make much of a difference when you put multi you know, eight ten million dollar properties in with thirty thousand dollar properties those eight ten million dollar properties put a big thumb on the scale as far as what they are going to be expected to to get most of the properties in the commercial properties in town are under a million there's some that are over, most are under a million, and many are substantially under a million. Right. Covestro, Yankee Candle are eight, ten million dollar properties owned by multinational corporations. Yep. So they're they're not taking money out of out of the community if, if we ask were to ask them. Well, they would be if they left. Mm -hmm. Covestro is an eight as a international firm did $18 billion in sales last year. I don't think a $20,000 increase in their property taxes is going to cause them to invest the millions of dollars it would take to move. Well, they, they may move. I'm not saying they, won't, they don't have reason, wouldn't have reason to move, but it was based on cost of do, overall cost of doing business, most of which would be personnel costs. Well, North, Northampton said the same thing yeah. when Coca-Cola left. And the water rate has gone up two hundred and forty percent. So it does it does make a difference. But and there might I I don't know the ins and outs of the Coca Cola, but my guess is they did not leave because of a twenty thousand dollar property tax increase. They left for a variety of reasons involving distribution of Coca Cola and pro and access to. And I know they've been consolidating bottling plants all over the country, and that was one of those. Which means that should Covestro Yankee Candle decide to move, my personal view is that it would not be because of a five-figure increase in the property taxes. It would be that would not be a reason because just the planning for a move, the study. I mean, we're we're spending as a town twenty-five thousand dollars. We just approved a special town meeting for to study where our highway department is going to go. What do you think it would cost Yankee Candle to, to do a study of where a new factory would be? They have a much bigger checkbook than we think us. Exactly. They've got much, which which is why $20,000 doesn't make much of a difference to them. As a corporation, they're, they're not going to move a multi million dollar facility because their taxes went up $20,000. They have other issues than a tax rate, but, but there's no question about it. They that, have the that same the, that the tax rate going up would not be the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And if it was, the camel's back was breaking anyway. What, what, what if that straw breaks some small other small businesses in town? Does that, that, that matter? That, that's the decision we have to make, is the burden to the small businesses how does that weigh against the benefit to the residential property owners and as, of, of a of a smaller decrease than the commercial people are getting an increase? And as Fred said, yeah. where the, it, all these other things that is available yeah. for residential people does come into play in that scenario. No, it doesn't because those, does. those, those are still available regardless of what of what part of the right. but, and that's the thing they can get that anyway. With right. a split tax rate, they can still get that, but right. the, the business owner can't get any of it. I I complete I agree. That and that's why I said that that's what we have to balance is so nothing more nothing in town. We were here a year ago having the same debate. Is there anything in town that we don't know about that has changed since last year's vote? In our financial situation as a town, not that I'm aware of. No, no. Can I just jump in with Lee's? No. I identify yourself first. Paul Antea, 50 Weber Road, Wheatley, Massachusetts. No. 
So he said finance committee. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to stop, the finance committee did have a discussion. And the feeling is that we should leave it as a level tax rate. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, we have a member on the committee who's uh, who spent many years as a municipal tax attorney. And she said unequivocally, split tax rates do not work in small municipalities such as this or other towns around us. And if you've been reading the paper, Northampton decided that they would stay a low level tax rate. Greenfield just decided that they would stay a level tax rate. Yes, it would be great to go after the industrial complex that we have here, but the flotsam and the getting the small guys that are our neighbors is in no way possible worth the return, unless you can put together a substantial economic outline as to the return to the town over time and the little to no disruption that it would cause. So with all those things on the table at the finance committee, we said that it was it just didn't make sense at this point in time and, and to do that. that I, I, I understand it, but I, I will once again make my point. Every town is different. And every downtown has a different economic structure. And that our economic structure here is nothing like Greenfield or Northampton. It isn't even like Hatfield because we do have the, the large industrial businesses. I mean, of the places that are in Franklin County, and comparable, I've always, in looking at the numbers, I've always felt that Irving is the most comparable because they have a very large paper plant in Irving in an otherwise agricultural town. And they have a split tax rate because they hit Irving for the taxes. And That, that's always been one of my goals, is that every town is structured differently. And I'm torn by this because we have the issue of commercial properties. And it will hurt the commercial properties. It will cost them more money. I know that. But I'm also looking at the 932 people, residential properties that it will help. And again, that's the that's the weighing we have to do. Is is the cost to those to the small commercial properties? And again, it, we'll we'll call it forty nine properties. So I want to take the fifteen industrial out of that equation because I don't think they're. I think they can handle it. I'll be with you just a second. Sure against the 932, some of whom don't need the tax break, and some of whom do. Can I just say, say something? There's Cynthia Gulley, and I wanted to hear Quickly, this, Fred, yes. Maybe she wants to come in. Uh, we can go back over here. Yeah. Uh, the, the two highest commercial properties in town, uh, you mentioned, uh, may not be concerned about tax rates, but whatever. We have had discussions with them too over assessments within the last 10 years. Serious discussions about of assessed values that, that they take. One is even over here, they've changed names, they've changed ownership, different companies. We've had we've had discussions with them over that. The other one, we've also had discussions with them before about their assessed values. Some before my time, Cynthia was here long enough to say that that's that is. I would we be shocked if they hadn't had them, discussed. But it's but it's we getting more concern from the commercial industries like that than private residents. We could I can count on one hand the number of private residents since I've been assessor for 15 years that come in and complain about their tax rate, about their assessed values, their assessed values. We can we cannot say that for commercial properties. We get I, more more concerns about that. Thank you, Fred. I sat on the finance committee before I sat here, 
And the concern of the Finance Committee is right. how do we keep the burden on the taxpayer down? Paul, do you disagree with that? I don't disagree with that, but I believe that there are um, no. other ways to do it. There, there may be, but that, that has always been the concern of the Finance Committee and the concern of this board is to keep tax, taxes down primarily, not exclusively, primarily for the residents of the town. That's and, true. And that and that that is the should is and should be the first thing on our mind is keeping is having our residents be happy. And I would say that you haven't had complaints about assessment because taxes people complain their taxes are too high all the time. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, something you said earlier, I just wanted to clarify. Um, when we're talking about commercial and industrial, that's all property that is zoned commercial and industrial, or are some of what we're calling these businesses also on land that's um, residential and agricultural Many of the businesses, small businesses are on land that is not zoned so, commercial. Sure. There are not three hundreds. Right. So do they fall into the RO category or the CIP category? If those businesses that business happen to... where we are collecting a personal property tax, but they're not on a uh, a coded in as a three hundred. Okay. And there are a lot of them. Yeah. And that's uh, primarily because like whatever the business is doing, it's an allowed use right. in a uh, agricultural residential. Right. Um, but they're a business, so they have the personal property tax. Right. Okay. That's that's all I that's that, that clarifies it for me. Thank you. Okay. Cynthia, did you have anything else to say? I'm trying to remember what I was gonna say now. Oh sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um Oh, I was just going to say that I've been here 30 years, and in that time, we used to get maybe a half dozen to eight residents, and, and, and these are residents, it's not business, who, who would apply for, for a tax abatement when they got their, their first real bill. I would say in the last 10 years, even on revalued years, which tend to be more publicized, although we always have a book showing the new values, it tends to be a higher, higher perception in people's minds. We get about two applications for the payment each year, two out of these 900 and some, that which I, 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 because I, people understand that we, you know, look very, very fairly. We're very careful on how we do our, that we're far more diligent. But, but I think you would agree with the statement that everyone wants to pay less taxes, whether residential, so. residential commercial, industrial, yes. everyone wants to pay lower taxes. Yes. And we'd all yeah. like to pay $2 a gallon for fuel as well. Right, so that, exactly. That's not going to happen. Okay. In the back. Uh, Bill Corso, 20 State Road LLC. Yeah. I'd just like to ask the same question as last year. Out of all these businesses, how many of them are on state property? You know, state road? State road. I do not have a breakdown of that. Fred, do you know? Oh, other than, well, you're five and ten state highway. That's yeah. the only thing I know. It's on a state road, the rest are all route five, route five and one six, route one sixteen. One sixteen. Uh where there's no you, you don't pay to plow the road, you don't pay to maintain the road, you don't pay. I'm a business on route five. I'm a very low impact on the town of Wayway. The business I run there nobody goes to school. Um I'm just I'm looking to see this. I asked the same questions last year. Are why are we looking to all of a sudden burden the commercial person? You know, a property like ours. But uh, I'd have to like to ask another question. How many of the commercial properties do you get other revenue from that helps the town, such as meal tax? 
Just the clock family dress. Yeah, right? yeah. And then the diner. I mean, there's when when you're looking to there last year you, you let it out that you you got a problem with Kobeth being so large and Yankee Candle being so large. There's there's a they're just under ten million dollars Yankee Candle. Kobeth is just under seven million dollars. Make pretty good money off them. They're a worldwide company. They employ a lot of people. Um but the to look at those couple companies which are worldwide and look to hit me another eighteen hundred dollars a year. So if somebody on a certain piece of property in this town, probably a seven hundred thousand dollar house, I can save them two, three hundred bucks. I don't I, I I just don't see that. No. I, I don't have an answer. I don't know the answer to the question on the business. I'm just saying. I, I'm saying you, you're going to look at some of the time, some of the small businesses that have been here, and you collect meals tax off them. They are they supplement the town income. Unfortunately, it doesn't lower the tax rate, I guess. But the, the small businesses help the town out more than you might think. Oh, I know. Small business. Okay, now, I, I, I know what I'm like. A couple of big, big industries in this town, such as Colbest, worldwide, Yankee yeah, Candle, worldwide. Berkshire Gas, yeah, they're, they're evaluated at what? Just under $4 million? And you're looking to get another 20000 out of them? If it goes up 20%? If you well, go it, it, it's, for 10 it, grand, they'll probably give it to you. Uh, let me see what the percentage of the yeah the, the increase would be in the ballpark of well they got off by ten percent of ten percent twenty percent split right uh I totally agree with you on what you're paying and what you get back. On the other hand, the same thing would apply wherever a business was. You would be applying paying taxes to the town city, whatever, where, wherever you're located. So it's it's not a question of if you move from Waitley, you're going to move, go to some place where you're either not going to pay taxes or you're going to suddenly send, no, send your kids to the school. Right. So the, the whole grind, though, yeah. the, the big grind is the big three, but it's going to affect the other four. Absolutely. Oh. Well, it, if, it it shouldn't, shouldn't, if it, we can it, find a way America, not to this shouldn't it. even be a conversation right. when you're yeah. talking about free people, come up with another way. Yeah. So, yeah. Can I say something kind of addressing this? I want to know, I hear what you're saying, and Mr. Corsi. I shop at your store. Um, I I really hear what you're saying. And, and what I, I mean, I think this should be a topic of conversation because by law it is. Sure. Right. So we do this every year, right. sure. and I really appreciate that you actually came here as do I. Absolutely. To, to, to do this. Um, I agree with you that a split tax rate is a blunt instrument. It, and that and, and with a blunt instrument, it means it might you might hit the thing you want to hit, but you hit a heck of a lot of other things. And I don't like that. I don't like that the only things our state in their infinite wisdom lets us do. Are, have these blunt instruments that have kind of got us in the position we're in now. So yeah. every year we need to kind of assess what damage mm -hmm. the blunt instruments are going to do mm -hmm. and make the best decision we can. So right. I, I'm glad we have the conversation. And then, uh, and I guess the one last thing I would say um, is that, um, I, and this is addressing what Mr. Forza said. Local taxes are not fee for service. It's what we pay for living in a good community. Like I haven't had kids in the school for years and years and years and years. I'm still paying for other people's kids to go to school, though. And I want to live in a community where everybody's kid gets to go to school, a good school, and graduate and have prospects. Okay, so I, I don't think of taxes as fee for service. And so that's where I disagree with you a little bit, but the place where I agree with you is that this is a blunt, blunt instrument and we have to consider it every year. And I don't, I don't know that it's gonna go the way you think it's gonna go. 
My guess um, is that the, yeah. the 932 homes in Whaley feel the same way as you and I do. It's a beautiful town to be in. And there's a reason for it. And part of that reason is the small business that that is in the community. And you have you had a, an opinion from your assessors and your finance committee. And I hope that between that and what we have to say, you guys will make the right decision. I think it's more than the small businesses paying taxes or their fair share or increases. It's what they contribute to the community. The community is not a tax base organization. It's a community made up of residents and, and businesses. And, and so far, I, since I've been here, I, I see the cooperation coming from, from both sides, businesses contributing, donating more than what they pay in taxes sometimes every year to the town, town organ, to town sponsored activities that seek donations from these businesses. They all contribute. At the same time, I see residents buying stuff from these businesses. They don't ignore the ones because they're here and they maybe uh, aren't paying their share or, or they're not agreeing with the tax rate. I don't see that. We're, we're, we're a, a community that uh, learned to live with, with each other. And, and our values have not changed. You can see the percentages. So far, nothing has changed. The force sought to change. If you want to increase taxes on businesses, they're, they're going to be impacted. Believe it or not, whether you think so by the tax rate, there's other things that they're going to go through that are going to cause them more pain than that. And finally, the- uh, Fred, I don't think you want to go there. If, if you I, 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 I don't think you want to accuse our business community of blackmailing. If you raise our taxes, uh, we're going to cut our contributions. Uh, I don't I, think you I, want to go there. I don't know if that will happen or not. I can't speak for them. But the other thing, look at the economic development that this town is trying to promote in the last three or four years, five years, starting, well, I'll go back to the 2018 study. We had an economic development study identifying corridors and ways to improve economic development, the more commercial development in there. We've got vacant properties today, town owned, some private owned, we're issuing RFPs to get developers to come in and build and do something with them. And now we're going to say, well, you can come here, but you're going to pay more taxes on it because we just increased the tax rate. They're not going to do that. Look at look at the vacant properties okay. in the oh, area. Fred, okay. <laughs> let let me, I, I just want to, I, we'll have one comment about that and then we'll get more discussion. And that is, that is a much bigger discussion. It's a discussion for a master plan, master plan update of what level of development we want as a town. If we want do, 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 to be yeah. interested, they, they need to. Fred, do we want to be roughly the agriculturally based town we are now, or do we want to be more commercially based and start to look more like Hadley, which is an extreme yeah. thing? I'm just saying that's not a discussion we can have now. But when you talk about wanting economic development, we need to have a discussion as a town of how much economic development we want. Joyce, did you have a yeah, yeah. I want to ask my, my question. I don't remember your name, sir. I'm Jenny. Right. Rich, you made a comment that property values are not increasing for businesses. Is that? I think they are. No, I, I don't. I don't believe I said that. Okay. I said it's fast. Not as fast. Not the rate not, is a little bit The rate's a little bit lower. Because yeah. so this past year, the, re the rate's lower. The previous years, it averaged a little bit higher. Yeah, no. Basically, I'm saying that if you bought a house two years ago and wanted to sell it today, huge boom because there's a shortage. There's not a lot of people that are going to jump into a commercial property for, for various reasons. You know, mm -hmm. square footage size. You know, employees. The whole, I mean, there's a. It's a. It's a lot easier to get into a, a home. You know. Okay. Or, you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, JD, comment. Yes, JD Roth, one seven seven State Road. I own JDR Builders, a Waitley small business since nineteen ninety nine. Currently operated my home. About to endeavor on building a project on Egypt Road. I employ seven full-time guys, very, very good paying jobs. I pay a fortune in excise tax. No one has brought that up. What businesses pay to excise tax the town of Waitley? I'm sure Mr. Pitts pays a fortune. I know Underground Supply pays 
over $13,000 a year just in uh, excise tax on their trucks. I'm continually upgrading my stuff. It cost me a fortune. And for me to grow and save, to buy a piece of property, to go through the process, to put this up and then club me in the knee with a higher rate, it's absolutely, totally unfair and discriminatory. It's not fair at all. I'm the first one with my wallet open when the baseball team or the fire department or the schools or whatever organization really wants something, whether they want a donation or they want labor or they want something, I'm always there for them. And for the town to turn their back on us to club me like this, it's so unfair. I 100% disagree with splitting the tax rate. It's not fair at all. And there's a lot of business owners on Route 5 that feel the same way that I do. We employ a lot of people, good paying jobs, we're there for the community and to beat us like this, it's not fair. Especially when most of the that in Waitley is home-based businesses and they're they're living on the uh, rental residential rate, which is what I currently operate under residential. But as soon as I get going on my property, I'm gonna pay a lot more. Okay, but I was just gonna say, right now you're operating out of your home. So yeah, should- well, I well I own the I own the property. I'm paying the property's not developed yet, so I pay like 150 bucks a quarter or whatever it is. But as soon as my building goes up, we're pouring the foundation next week. I'm going to have a substantial tax bill. I'm investing in Waitley. I'm investing my hard earned dollars in the town of Waitley to grow my business, and I'm going to be paying a lot of property tax on it. But to make me pay even more property tax is not fair. But were you to stay, not build the, the new facility and yep. stay where you as you are, yep. your taxes would actually go down because you're paying taxes on residential property? My taxes go down a fraction, but the excise tax I paid to Waitley would well, make you flip it. The excise tax has not, as with the But other, it is because businesses have lots of trucks and vehicles and they pay a lot. A lot. Ask Mr. Pitts how much he pays in excise tax to the town of Waitley. If he left Waitley, you're not only losing the tax revenue from him, but also the excise taxes, which are astronomical. His trucks cost a fortune. The pushing business out of town is is set by the state. Can I can I ask that we not discuss if you didn't build? Let's not conjecture about things that aren't happening. Okay. He is building. Let's, this is what's happening. Let's discuss what we've actually got on our plates. Yeah, I think we we need to bring this to a yeah, it's and, and discuss this for quite some time. And, and I'm hearing the same things over and over again. Um, I, I hear you, Mr. Ross. I am. I yes. completely understand what you're saying. I I hear you. I hear everyone else. That is, we that's why we have a decision to make. Any other comments here? We have a motion to close the public hearing. I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Any Thank you. further discussion among the board? Not from me. Um, not for me. I know how I'm going to vote. Does someone want to bring a motion? With I regard to. move that we retain a single tax rate because. What the state has given us to work with is a blunt instrument, and as much as we would like some of the larger companies to pay a little bit more, I do agree that it would disproportionately hurt the smaller companies without a corresponding significant benefit to residential owners. Um, second that. I'm not sure that because has to be a part of the motion, right. but I appreciate hearing what you're saying. That's my <laughs> thoughts, but the motion is I I move that we retain a single tax rate. Any further discussion? No. Do a roll call vote. Julie. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. Um, Next on the open space discount. Do I have a motion? Mm-hmm. Thank you, both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Appreciate your uh, I move that we continue without the open space discount. Second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Roll call, Julie. Aye. 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 
principal residence discount. Okay. I would move that we um, maintain the current status of no residential discount. Second. Discussion? No. Joyce? Aye. You? Aye. Aye. Small business exemption. I move that we maintain what we have now, which is no small business discount. Right? Correct. Yeah. Which is not applicable. It, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For the right. reasons they said it's right. not applicable, yeah. we have to vote on this. Oh, okay. Vote Second. Not have it. Second and and I. <laughs> Further discussion? Joyce? Aye. 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 Do we have any further items to discuss? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.